Hi, I'm Sabrina Whitehorse. You are watching Taken TV, and I am really honored to have an amazing guest, Kyle Whitmire. Look at this book, Revival of Grace. And I would love to have you speak to our audience a little bit about Revival of Grace. What inspired you to write the book? And what is the book's premise? Yeah, absolutely. Those are great questions. So in 2010, uh, in the dinosaur days of Facebook, you could have a Facebook group and you could mass message that group. And so we started a Facebook group called The Weekly Word. And it was meant to send out a weekly devotional to a couple thousand people on Facebook. And we did that for years before Facebook changed the way that groups interacted with each other and really the whole setup. Yes. And so one day I was sitting down, it was my turn uh, to write the weekly devotional. And I started writing about grace. That was the topic for that week. And I just kept writing and I kept writing and I kept writing. And I kind of sat back in my chair after I got it four pages deep into it. I'm like, God, what am I, what am I doing? Nobody's going to read a devotional that's four pages. Long. Right. And, and this was still on Facebook. Right? Oh yeah, it was still on Facebook. And I felt like the Lord said to me, you're writing a book. And I said, all right. So from that point, I just kept, kept typing, on going. kept typing and... And I didn't really run out of content. It just kept kind of welling flowing. up in me and flowing out. Exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so from there, I I went on a journey. You know, I, I kept writing and I, I started trying to figure out, okay, if, if God wants me to write a book, then I want to steward it well. Am I going to publish it? Am I going to have a publisher? What is that going to look like? How am I going to bring all of this together? And of course, I didn't really do any of it. Um, Yes, I know, right? And that's the beautiful thing. It's like you talk about the journey and you talk about, I didn't really do anything. And it's God. And I was just having a conversation with somebody off camera on when we allow ourselves to flow. And like you did, you were doing a Facebook weekly, right? The inspirations. And then before you know it, it just went on and on and on. And you just went with the flow and you just followed your journey. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's such a powerful message to get out to people that might want to do what you're doing, mm-hmm. but might not have the faith to be able to follow what it is that you decided. You didn't stop when you had a Facebook platform and you had four pages and you were like, well, no one's going to want to read four pages, but you continue to go on. Yeah. What gave you that inspiration? How did, how did the Lord speak with you? This is that's an interesting question. How did the Lord speak with me? Uh, from the perspective of writing the book, it was almost like he placed it inside of me. And I know that can sound really cliche. Not at all. Oh, my goodness. Look at what I just opened up. Identity. Yeah. Yes. So tell us about that. When I mean, you can think, oh, identity sounds really cliche. But when God works through you, nothing is cliche. Yeah. So I just want to I wanted to speak that sure, yeah. for you. So tell us about identity, because I think a lot of people right now, especially with everything that's going on in the world, there's a lot of of people that are looking for their own identity right now. And there's so much confusion. Yeah. Well, that's a great question. So for me, this journey of identity really began in 2013. I became a Christian in 2009 and immediately became wrapped up in, well, what are my gifts? What's my calling? How am I defined as as according to like apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher? And those things are good. And we are called to be those things, but those things are not supposed to identify us. And I was very caught up in, okay, I'm... I have this mantle and I have this gift and this is who I am. And in 2013, I encountered a message on identity that just totally wrecked me and changed my life. And it was so simple. It's that you're a son, you're a daughter, and there's nothing you can do to add to that. There's nothing that you can do to take away from it. It's not contingent on your behavior at all, your performance, what you do, what you attend, what you don't attend. It's just innately within you. And that just rocked me because I sort of loved, and I think we all do sort of love performing to a degree. I mean, it's where we we have this addiction to like, let me earn, let me do, let me strive. And this was just so counter to that. Yes, it's like instead of of doing, I feel like what you're saying, the message is just be, being, human beings, right? Instead of human doers. Right now, 
the way that our world is set up, everybody feels that they have to constantly be in this, this, this rhythm that just is causing so much stress and so much, so much dysfunction on a spiritual level. And it seems like what you're doing with this book is just such a godly thing because it's revival of grace. How beautiful is that? Yeah. What does grace mean for you, for our audience, if you could share that? To grace to me is, number one, undeserved favor. And I think that we've probably all heard that over the years. If we've walked in the church in any any degree, we hear this, this phrase, grace is undeserved favor. And I think that it is that. But I think it goes a step further, and grace is actually the enabler. Grace enables us, and I don't have to strive. It's my identity is not dependent on what I do. But now I'm enabled by grace to go out and to share the gospel, to see the kingdom come in my community, in my friend group, in my workplace, in my school, whatever my sphere of influence is. And I get to transform that, and that doesn't have to be a striving thing. And there's no sense of, oh, I have to earn this. And I have to do this so that God is well pleased with me. And so that's what grace is to me is, is number one, it's undeserved favor. But number two, it is the impartation from Holy Spirit for me to go out and be enabled to see the kingdom manifest. You know, I think that um, I want to thank you for that, because in our world today, like we talked just, just now about confusion, there's so much confusion that's going on. And confusion is obviously not of the Holy Spirit. And so I think that when you have these kinds of conversations, it's so empowering in such a godly way. And I I don't need, I I just don't think that there's enough of that going on right now in the world. And that's why um, Taken TV exists. That's why people like yourself have followed the journey and you've gone with the flow and you actually allowed yourself to grow back in 2000, I think 11 or nine, or it's been a while. Um, But when you look at the way of the world today, um, is there any message in closing that you can maybe share with our audience that would give them some some inspiration? Yeah, there is actually, and it doesn't have a ton to do with my book. Um, although it certainly we're waiting, <laughs> we're, we're, we're lovingly waiting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would say this, and, and I hope it's okay if I look at the camera. Please, um, please. I think if there's a message of the hour, and there's something that people need to take away, some encouragement that they can take away from this is that. And it's something that I discovered very recently. It's that righteousness, we've been told, we've been told righteousness means to be in right standing with God. Have you ever heard that before? Yeah. You know that that's not actually the definition at all of righteousness. If you look at it in uh, the Greek language, righteousness actually means to be as you ought to be. And that has to, that has to cause a question to well up in, inside of you. If the Bible says that I'm righteous, right? And if righteousness means to be as I ought to be, then the question really becomes, how ought I to be? And I think it's this, I ought to be a son, I ought to be a daughter. I don't have to do anything in order to earn God's approval. He calls me righteous. If I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, he calls me righteous. And that means I am exactly as I ought to be. I don't have to try and add anything or take away anything in order to earn approval. I think that's the message that's really the Holy Spirit's got that burning on my heart right now in this season, and it's probably the biggest thing I'd like to share. Well, I really want to say thank you so much for uh, taking the time to be on our broadcast, and um, the voice that you share with our audience is so powerful and so needed thank you. and so appreciated. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank it's a you. pleasure having you. Sabrina Whitehorse, you're watching Taken TV, and we are in Palm Beach, Florida with amazing people. We've got a lot more to come. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.